Hi, I'm Joe. I'm a technical specialist here with Tormach. And today we're going to show you how to touch off a drill in the lathe using a regular indicator on a mag base or using um, a coaxial indicator like our Centro. Uh, first thing, um, this is a chuck a setup part in there. Most machinists like to have a scrap piece of metal by their machine that they can use just for touch off. And aluminum is a pretty common material in our shop um, and it's harder. I wouldn't want to use plastic to touch off my tools because it's too easy to deform. So you, you do have to consider what material you're using even for your touch off um, on your machine. There we go. So I'm going to use a uh, tool that I've already touched off and set up um, to find my work coordinate system because I've shut off the machine since I've used it. Um, so this is something you should do every time you turn off your machine. You want to reestablish your X coordinate system and your Z. So first thing is reference. Always want to reference Z first. This way if you have any tools sticking out by your spindle you don't accidentally ram it into the, the spindle face. So then I do X. So now Position my tool so I can scrape a diameter, again making sure I stay in that uh, position when I cut the diameter and measure it entering my work offset. Spindle. My tool still in the position that it was when it made the cut. So I'm going to use a micrometer to measure it. So I have a measurement of one inch, point seven five two. Seven five two seven, seven point uh, point seven five two seven. So I uh, use a micrometer because it's a far more accurate tool than a caliper. It also um, is easier to get it square on the stock. When you're trying to use a caliper, sometimes you get uh, uh, kitty wampus, and that will cause uh, error when you're setting up. First thing I need to make sure I use tool nine to do that. Um, generally, you want to do this before you cut, but um, as long as you're in the right tool when you set the offset, that's the important part. And you can see I'm kind of close. I measured 1.7427. Uh, I'm off by a tenth thou. So I'll need to re-enter that. I'm entering a negative number because I'm on the uh, bottom of the spindle. Point seven four. Oh, sorry, two seven. I'm doing this in the work coordinate. I'm not touching my tool because it's already been touched off before. Hence the green lights. So now I'm going to use this tool to face my part. I want to go all the way across to make sure I have a nice flat face. Drop the spindle. So I just established a Z work coordinate system, Z0. So I'm going to, on the controller, the work coordinate system area, tell it that my tool, which I am in tool number nine, make sure, Z0, and enter, or I could always hit the zero button. So now my work coordinate system is set and I'm ready to touch off the drill. Just going to back this off. First thing I'm going to touch off is Z. So that's the tip of the drill to the face. So one, two, three block, very handy tool. 
We're gonna use this as a shim instead of a piece of paper. It's a little more rigid, it doesn't uh, squish. It also keeps me farther away from my part. So in case I go too far, I'm not gonna damage my part at all. So you wanna make sure though, you never put this in compression with the tool. Kind of use it like a, a go, no-go gauge, slide it in and out. So now I'm just gonna back it off until Inside the block through, I'm at a one thou increment. So I'm close. I'm going to change my step to be a one tenth increment. And now I'm going to go back and approach the block and basically go until I cannot slide the block through anymore. There we go. So now I know that the tip of this tool is one inch away from the face of my part. Again, I go to the tool number. I have this set as tool 11, hit enter. I have selected the right tool interface, in this case a drill. And my X I'm not gonna do right now, I'm, gonna, I'm doing Z, and I wanna tell it that I am one inch away from my part. Hit enter, I hit enter again, and we can see down at the DRO that it's seeing itself as one inch away from my part, which is what I want. So I'm now gonna do the same thing with the drill. Number tool number 12. Right. Okay, so again, change my tool number to 12 for my drill. Again, making sure it's the right graphic. And again, I'm one inch away. I can just hit enter twice. Again, my DRO reads tool one. So if you're ever curious on what your tool is, there's another good spot to look at. So always make sure you're on the right tool when you're setting offsets. So that's my Z. Now for X. One way to do this inexpensively is with a magnetic base with a test indicator. Um, it's a little bit bulky. But it involves locking the mag base onto something like your 3-jaw chuck or if you're using the 5C part, you usually can clamp it on the side here. It just needs to be on the rotating part wherever you clamp it. And then I'm going to do tool 11 first. So I'll get it about close so my eye can get it. And then I'll Bring the indicator down till it reads it. So it doesn't have to be too precise, just something that as long as your needle is uh, perpendicular to your work surface, that's the important part. Okay, so I got it nice and tight, and I'm able to swing this around. So now if you notice, I got a gap there on that side and I'm touching on this side. So my tool isn't exactly centered. So now I'll grab my indicator. I'm gonna back and Z just a little bit more. I'm gonna move my Z down, or my X down. So now it's just touching that needle, that indicator. Now it's about the same position. So, but I'm not seeing any movement on my indicator, so my indicator's not down far enough. So I'll use my fine adjustment. Doesn't matter what the number reads, you can zero out your dial if you want. The big thing is it is it repeatable. So downside to using the setup is I have to go where the dial is. You can't see it on half the part because um, you rotate it around. So that's where I use nice little tricks like having a mirror um, is handy. Or if you're a little more technologically advanced, a uh, cell phone with the uh, selfie feature. One good thing about selfies, you can use to look at the back side of the dial without, uh, it's a little hard to get in focus, there we go, without having to uh, bend around and stretch your back. So, so you can see. Now right now I'm gonna focus on setting my X, which is on this side and the, the bottom side where my indicator is. You could use the same technique to center your Y 
which is a tool height up and down. But that you have to shim your riser block to bring my tools up and down. And on the quick change tool posts, there's a little threaded rod that you use to adjust the height. And on the turret, you end up using um, the setup um, document runs you through getting that turret shimmed to the right height. So just some different techniques uh, to use for that. So now I moved it to six. Check up top. And I'm a little bit past seven. I'm going to switch to tenths. And keep going the same direction. Now I'm reading seven on top and seven on the bottom. So you just um, go back and forth between measuring the top and the bottom of the tool with the indicator. Once you have the same number on both sides, that means your tool is centered in the indicator, which means that the center of the spindle is in line with the center of your tool. So that's when we set the X touch on our tool. So zero, enter, oop, caught myself. I'm not on tool 12, I'm on tool 11. So, we'll get to tool 12 in a sec. Tool 11, zero, touch it off, and then we know we did it right, and our work coordinate system reads what we actually have. So that's how you use a magnetic base.